All right, guys, so it is the beginning of a new week. We had a great weekend at the Overland Expo with friends. However, really last minute on Saturday morning, we ended up having to change campsites. Our first campsite was absolutely amazing, and it was honestly everything that we could have wanted, especially long-term. However, we got some knocks on our door and thankfully just got a warning, but we didn't want to risk it by staying there throughout the weekend. Seems to us that it was more of a money grab with the influx of people for the expo, but we still found a really awesome campsite. I'm gonna show you around and then we're gonna do some things to my bike. So let me give you a tour. Got our guard dog spot over here. Do you like this weather? He definitely likes to sit and bark at every single car that goes by. Next to him, we have our hammock set up. There's actually another strap for Tanner's hammock. Boom, we have had a fire almost every single morning. Click chairs, these things are awesome, super lightweight, literally set up, tear down in five seconds. And then we got the rig and the better rig. Thing looks so nice after the lift and the wheels and the tires, and it's done surprisingly well hauling this, especially after so much rain that we got. This ground was soft. So basically that wraps up the tour of our campsite. It is super nice because there is literally no one in earshot or eyesight around us and it is super private. As far as our plans for the future, it looks like this trailer is hopefully going before we leave here. That puppy is going to get built out as much as we can this summer and will hopefully be our main adventure rig. Come follow me. I feel like I'm doing MTV Cribs. <laughs> So this trailer has actually treated us really well. It's a perfect size for the three of us. This is where most of the editing and magic happens. <laughs> Not super ergonomically friendly, but it does its job. So we actually use this as a pantry because behind you, we have our 12 volt fridge. We actually run the entire camper off solar and it's ran through this power station. Unfortunately, the AC port actually broke so more on that in a few minutes. <laughs> All my delicious meals are cooked right here. We love our cast iron, our bed. I don't mind it, a little small for Tanner. When you take a peek back here, his legs pretty much almost hit the window that's back there. This was actually a bunkhouse and the person before us had cut it, which is actually quite nice because I can't imagine me being the wall sleeper and having this completely right up against you. But then our clothes storage is up here. This is a little bathroom. We have more storage here. You can take a peek in there if you want to. And we don't use the toilet. It works fine as far as we know, but we don't want to deal with that. So we use alternative methods. <laughs> so as Alexis mentioned, we run this whole unit off of a portable power station. And I've actually really enjoyed doing it that way. Yes, you could go and source full size lithium batteries and run it to a controller and do all that stuff. But for sheer convenience, this is a nice setup. As mentioned, it just recently broke. The AC ports stopped working completely. And I won't mention the brand, but they would not warranty it. Thankfully though, Anchor had just reached out to me and sent out one of their latest and greatest power stations. I am not joking when I say that this was sent out at the perfect time, literally as that thing broke, we now have this and this is the Anchor Powerhouse. This thing is an absolute unit. It's got a lot of cool features. On the main interface here, you have four standard AC ports. You have three USB-C, two USB-A, two standard 12 volt car sockets and a 30 amp RV plug. Now you don't see that a lot. And I'm actually looking forward to trying this out. So here in a sec, we're gonna hook this thing up to the camper and see if it will power. You also have a light up here with a few different settings. Gets really bright. It's a nice warm tone. The display tells you everything you need to know. A lot of smart technology in this. But one of my favorite features is the wheels. And you can actually use this handle here. So it comes with a telescoping handle so you can wheel this thing around. As far as the weight, if I had to guess, 60 pounds, give or take. Very manageable, especially with two people. They have these nice handles on the side. But I'm eager to try this thing out, so let's go plug it in. So it's hooked up, 
we got the blue light. Let's go inside and see if we can run the microwave or something cool. We got a light. Will it work? Oh my God. Popcorn, macaroni and cheese. Yeah, we don't use the microwave at all, so that's nice. Yeah. So currently we only have the power station tied in to the 12 volt system, but we use the AC to charge other batteries and other things that we need to use because this power station does not have a 30 amp hookup. So literally right out of the box with the anchor power station, you can take that thing, go off grid and run your entire camper. Pretty damn cool. All right, so I'll have you go outside. I'll set a two minute timer on this. Go see how much power we use. Haven't gone down. Oh, oh, we're outputting 1700 watts right now. Mm-hmm. That's it? 96. That's not bad at all. So if we were keeping this camper, we would definitely use this as our main source of power. There's a bunch of different configurations that you can do. Like I said, we had this tied into the 12 volt system, but honestly, I would just make an indoor pigtail to plug this in to the 30 amp. And literally, if we got a soft start for the AC, I think it would only draw around 2000 watts. So it is possible, probably we'll never try it. We're actually gonna have a 12 volt air conditioning unit in the camper once we get that built. We have 400 watts of solar on the roof of this camper, but it can accept up to 1000 watts. This also charges really quick. It has a fast charger built into it. So in only a couple hours, you can have this thing fully topped off and ready to go for all of your off-grid adventures. This is the 767 powerhouse from Anchor. I've used a lot of Anchor products over the years. They make quality stuff. They have good customer service and all of this functionality in a small package. I definitely recommend it and be sure to use my link below to save $400 on this unit. But as of right now, the plan is to get this cleaned up and put on Facebook Marketplace and hopefully sold in the next couple weeks before we go and we'll go from there. Let's get started on putting these parts on my bike. All right, shout out to Hyperlite Moto because I have some goodies too. Looks like I got some swing on guards, a fuel cap chain guide, and a front sprocket cover. Super stoked to put these on. Let's get to it. This is such a necessity. There is something with the stock gas cap that when it gets heated up, expands and it becomes impossible to get off. Thankfully, you're able to pry up on it with a flathead or some kind of multi-tool. I think one time I actually just was able to like use my nail with some gloves on and pry up on it enough to get it off, but it is a pain in the butt. So this will be super nice to have. Yeah, as you can see, my bike was actually in the shade, so I'm kind of surprised. Eh, there it goes. Woo, fancy. So now we're gonna do the chain guide. Tanner was nice enough to put a new chain on my bike. Realistically, I think he just needed the chain off of my bike, but he was nice enough to replace it and not leave me with nothing. <laughs> looks pretty easy, because it looks like it's literally two bolts. In order to get these bottom ones off, Gotta get this mud off. So mine is actually bent, of course, and it's making it a little bit difficult to get this last screw out. So as you guys can see, this is bent here and it is causing that to not come out. I'm just gonna have to probably pry it or wiggle it enough to get it off there. All right, I got the old one off there, so now we can put the new one on. I ended up having to like literally shove a screwdriver in there and just pry on the between the black and the white plastic and finally got it off there. This comes with all new hardware, so that's nice. Let's see how this fits on there. Thought it was like one long continuous, but it's actually four separate screws. All right, guys, we're done. It looks good. Pretty easy to install too. I think next I'll do the swing arm guards, but as you can tell, very dirty. So I'm gonna clean them off a little bit and then we'll put them on. So now that we got her clean, we'll put it in position. So I'm gonna have to take those out. See if I can do it by hand. Ooh. No, I don't think so. Of course, everything on my bike is very corroded. Nope. Well, you guys can see that that is stripped, of course. 
Oh, this bike never fails to make everything hard. Well, I don't feel like waiting for Tanner to get back or for him to deal with this strip screw. So I think I literally am just going to cut this out and make it fit around it. I think it's gonna work. Doesn't look the best, but it could be worse. And it's functional, so. Didn't have to deal with a strip screw and it'll go on there just fine. Number two is on. We only got one more thing to do and that's the front sprocket guard. this would be such a messy job. Tanner said he's gonna be back in about 45 minutes, an hour-ish, and I wanna get a fire going because we're gonna have brats over the fire. So I'm going to get that started and gather some more wood and we'll see him when he gets back, hopefully soon, because I'm starving. I'm actually pretty proud of that because I was actually able to start it with just the coals from like 8 a.m. this morning. Took a lot of lung power, but I did it and I'm pretty proud. <laughs> we got a nice fire going, so. Mission successful and now we'll wait for some food. I've never made roasting sticks, and I would say those are pretty good. Somebody finally made it back to camp, and we are cooking up dinner. We've got the Brussels sprouts on the pan. We got the weenies on my very lovely homemade sticks, and even some beans in a cup. Amazing, amazing spread. Five star Woods restaurant, MSG. <laughs> we got some other goodies over here for dinner. Broccoli salad I made. Still got some daylight left, and then we'll eat. All right guys, so that pretty much wraps up everything that I wanted to do to my bike, except for the foot pegs. So I really want to take Tanner's anchor foot pegs because I have mangled stock ones. He actually bought the 
Fastway Evo 4 foot pegs, I believe. And those are really nice because they're adjustable for taller riders. So hopefully we'll get around to switching those up and I can get rid of these really mangled ones. But everything was pretty straightforward. The only thing Tanner did help me with was taking the chain off. I could not for some reason get the one side of the link to come off, but I was actually able to put it back on together. Otherwise, everything was fairly easy minus some problems with my bike specifically with the strip bolt. Otherwise, I'm very happy with how it turned out. So be sure to stay tuned for some upcoming riding. We're in a new spot, gonna be a little bit different than the desert. I like it because it is similar to Ohio and in certain aspects there is a lot more legal single track out here which is nice so stay tuned for those videos because i'm sure we'll be riding soon be sure to like comment and subscribe and get yourself some merch peace